Welcome to the first video of the Illustrator CS5 for Architects uh, tutorial series offered by the School of Architecture at the University of Queensland. Okay, we're going to start by opening a new file and you'll see this is the Illustrator program uh, that we've opened. This is the first window that you'll see. There's nothing in the um, background, just grey. So we're going to go and open a new file by going up to, sorry, create a new file by going to File, New, and the shortcut for this is Control N. Click on that. That brings up the new document dialog box. So the first option we choose is the name of our project. So I'm going to call this panel presentation. We can choose the number of artboards and the artboards, as you'll learn in a subsequent video, are the uh, pages. So an A3 page or two A3 pages would be two artboards. So we select how many artboards we want. Let's choose two for the moment and we can choose the spacing between those artboards. So if they're sitting side by side, as we're indicating um, over here with these little icons, side by side, grid by row, um, then we will get them sitting side by side. So for example, you can arrange by row, which means the first one will sit on the left, the second on the right, etc., etc. Or we can have them arranged one, two, three, four in a grid or vertically like that. Mess around with these different functions and see how they work for you. Um, you can of course flip it back to front, um, uh, change to right to left by clicking this icon there. So the first artboard will be on the right, moving to the left. This is a technicality that probably won't matter, but if you're referencing your artboards later on by number, it will be important to use. Otherwise, click the spacing, which we can always change later. You can change the uh, size of your artboards, which is important. Um, we always operate in millimeters. You'll learn how to um, set the units if they aren't already in millimeters in, these, um, in the preferences um, box, which we'll get to in a later video. Um, but otherwise, in the new um, document dialog box, you can select millimeters from the drop-down box. You'll see a few different options here, pixels, points. But given that this is architecture and we will be printing out all our work, we want to work in millimeters. The size of an A3 sheet is 420, that's horizontal, by 297 millimeters. We don't need to type the millimeters, it pops up there automatically. And just a note that all these options can be changed after you've created your document. So if you aren't quite sure about the size of the A3 and you just want to get it out, get something approximate and you can always change the um, size of the document later. Okay, bleed. That just uh, If you increase the bleed, it just means um, Illustrator is going to attempt to print even more of your artwork. If it's really close to the edge and you want it to print right to the edge, um, you can increase the bleed. I generally don't use that and I just keep a 10 millimeter margin, but you're welcome to play around with that. And of course, orientation just swips, switches the width and height value in case you want it to be portrait or landscape. A few advanced options you can get by dropping down this uh, little tick box there. Color mode, CMYK or RGB. Now those are the two different types of um, um, color calculation, I guess you could describe it as. CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, etc. Um, different colors uh, all combine to create all the colors of the rainbow and so do red, green and blue. CMYK is used by printers, so always select if you want to print out, and given this is architecture, we nearly always print out our work. Um, choose CMYK. That way when you print it, or when you see it on, on the screen, it'll have an accurate uh, depiction of what will actually be printed out. If you are drawing in RGB, you might find your colors are quite unlike that which gets printed out. That can be particularly frustrating when a black that you thought was black isn't black and stands out as gray against your black background. Your rust effects. Uh, DPI is dot, dots per inch and another way, another um, anagram for it, sorry, anagram, um, well, word for it is PPI, that's points per inch, it means the same thing. Your screen is made up of pixels, uh, you may have heard that before, tiny dots, each one is a color, um, that, and that's how you see shapes on the screen. Um, it depends on how many points per inch, if you were to print an inch of uh, your artwork on a printer, how, how high the resolution is. Um, Google resolution or DPI or PPI, if you want to learn a bit more about this. But otherwise, one thing to know is um, 150 PPI is standard for printing. You probably won't get higher than that, but if you go and get a really high quality print um, at a professional plotting um, shop, 
uh, then 300 ppi could be recommended. I have been caught out by going with 150 dpi and it hasn't been good enough quality. And 72 ppi is a screen quality, so I don't often use that as I normally print out my work, so we'll select 150. Going too high can increase the file size and make it difficult to work with. And that's all I'll show you for this one. Uh, click OK. OK, one more thing I'm going to show you is how to use templates. So if we go up to File, you'll see there's a second option below the New um, tab, and that's the New From Template, which is Shift Control New. Uh, we can also access that option by clicking on the New box and then selecting the Template button on the right hand side. Both um, um, essentially do the same thing. So you'll open, you'll see it opens up the browser box, and we can choose from blank templates to uh, Japanese templates, and you can get templates off the internet as well if you find some decent ones. Um, so, for example, if we wanted to do um, some marketing, Japanese marketing, a Japanese poster, for example, we'll click on that. You can see the preview in the preview box down below, or a Japanese resume. Let's go with a resume. We'll go new. It does all the options for us. And you'll see we can just start editing um, an existing template. If we create our own template, for example, our A3 poster, we may want to go to File, Save as Template, so that we can later use it in a following project or in the same project for a different drawing.